Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Drones are dropping marijuana over Trinidad and Tobago's prison walls. This story takes the lead in our 1070th edition of Caribbean Perspective for Wednesday, 17th March, 2021. Details after this break. Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the Food Fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The Food Fair and GrenadaMarket.com now make it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or thefoodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. Welcome back. The Joint Select Committee on National Security heard from the Acting Prisons Commissioner that commerce is driving criminal gang activity in remand with a pack of cigarettes costing as much as $500 in the prison. The top prisons officer of Trinidad and Tobago also told the committee that drones are being flown over the prison walls to drop off marijuana. As the committee chairman asked if inmates are allowed to have up to 30 grams of ganja, as in the case on the outside. TV6's Jewel Brown reports. During the virtual hearing of the Joint Select Committee on National Security on Monday, after Vice Chairman Paul Rudds posed the question about drug trafficking in the prisons, the committee's chairman, Fitzgerald Hines, had a question in reference to the law that allows for up to 30 grams of marijuana for personal use at private residences. My understanding is that marijuana is quite prevalent in the prison and sometimes it's allowed to be prevalent to keep people's heads cool in parentheses. And are they permitted 30 grams? Well, uh, are they permitted 30 grams? I'm just asking so the public can understand. Absolutely no. No, no 30 grams. Um, marijuana, drugs, as far as I know, marijuana in the whole is still illegal in the prison services. Um, I know there are several people outside who are advocating for, for, for the plantation of marijuana in prison, this is not going to happen. However, the Acting Prisons Commissioner said searches are conducted in the prisons on a daily basis. And every single day, I can tell you, marijuana is found. The, the, the walls at the Golongo prison are so porous that someone, it is a, a, a seven feet chain link fence wire that we are um, trying to rebuild very soon with a contract from the government. Um, we expect them to go up with a big wire wall. People pass and throw. So you're telling me every day, because if, if every day marijuana is found, yeah. it means that every day people are throwing marijuana over the fence? Every day? <laughs> the Acting Prisons Commissioner said it is not just people before revealing an even more concerning development involving small remote controlled aerial devices. We reach a stage now where drones are seen over the prison. Drones, we have actually caught a drone and processed it and sent it to the right agency. And what, is, what was attached to this drone? Well, a package of marijuana, sir. And other contraband, including cell phones. He said marijuana comprises 90% of the drugs being found in the prisons. There's a, 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 um, what else, a niche trade because at the end of the day, there are a lot of inmates coming to prison who would have used marijuana yourself and choose to continue it inside. So marijuana is business in the prison? It's a business. It's where the money is. The money are. But Mr. Paul Chan said that is not the only lucrative trade in the prison system, as he made this declaration in response to a question from committee member Keith Scotland. I can categorize state there is no gang war here. There are individuals with difference of opinions and different interaction, and sometimes uh, there's conflict. But to say one gang versus the other don't exist in the prison. This led to a follow-up question from committee chairman Hines. On the outside, they shoot at each other, they fight for turf, uh, all of those things. They buy and sell guns, they have their Zessa parties, and they have their fancy parties, and other fancy parts of the country too. It's not only Zessa parties. 
They have Western parties, Eastern parties, all sorts of parties. So that how is gang activity manifest in the prison? The prison service to Brass said it is manifest by commerce behind the prison walls. Contraband translates into money. And what is happening? A pack of cigarettes that will normally sell for about $25, $30 in prison that goes for sometimes about as much as $500. So it's really about making money. Jewel Brown, TV6 News. The list of European countries suspending use of the AstraZeneca vaccine is growing. So is concern about taking the vaccine. But the vaccine maker is insisting its vaccine is safe. It's pointing to scientific evidence to back up its claim. More in this TV6 News item with Anselm Gibbs. Facing complaints and criticism, AstraZeneca is standing by its vaccine. The concern is about blood clots developing in a number of people who took the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine maker has put out a statement offering reassurance that based on scientific evidence, its COVID-19 vaccine is safe. The company says after reviewing all available safety data from more than 17 million people in the European Union and the United Kingdom, that's people who took the AstraZeneca vaccine, there's no evidence of increased risk of pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or thrombocytopenia in any defined age group, gender, batch, or in any particular country. AstraZeneca says so far across the EU and UK, there have been 15 events of DVT and 22 events of pulmonary embolism reported among those who took the vaccine. The company is saying this is much lower than would be expected to occur naturally in a population of such a size. On Monday, Italy and France joined Germany, announcing they are temporarily halting use of the vaccine. TNT and the rest of the Caribbean have been using the AstraZeneca vaccine and are expected to get more doses from COVAX. Anselm Gibbs, TV6 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, is encouraging all Caribbean nationals to take the COVID-19 vaccine. The words of encouragement come amid the emergence of new variants of the viral disease, which could prove more infectious and deadly, thus delaying efforts to end the COVID-19 pandemic. More from this HDS News Force report with Stanley Lucian. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, is closely monitoring the emergence of variants of the COVID-19 causing virus in the region. The executive director of CAFA, Dr. Joyce and John, says variants are a natural part of viral infection and replication. But not all variants are significant. However, of concern to medical researchers are the British, South African and Brazilian variants. The CAFA executive director says the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is being administered in St. Lucia and much of the region, is effective against the Brazilian variant P1. A recent study conducted by AstraZeneca suggests that the vaccine will work against the P1 variant from Brazil. The Brazilian regulatory authorities have assessed it and are so far satisfied by the results. So much so that the Brazilian government has since approved the AstraZeneca vaccine for use in its population where the P1 variant is widespread and has ordered more than 200 million doses of AstraZeneca. Dr. St. John touted the benefits of nationals of the region taking the vaccine. She says there's mounting evidence of reduced rate of infection in countries with a high uptake in inoculation against the COVID-19 virus. CARFA also re reported the detection of a variant in the Caribbean that is related to the P1 variant but not quite the same. This new variant carries changes which will require additional research to determine their effects on transmissibility and efficacy of vaccines. We are assured by the scientific research 
of the results of reduced disease in countries which have vaccinated large percentages of their populations. CARFA encourages the population of our region to be vaccinated. The longer a virus remains in circulation, the greater the chances of the emergence of a more deadly and infectious variant. Health authorities discovered a variant in the region which seemed similar to the Brazilian P1 but had significant differences. This has led to the region being placed on alert for a possible development of its own Caribbean variant. Researchers are also working to learn more about the ease of spread and transmission of the variants, whether they could use cause more severe illness, and whether currently authorized vaccines will fully protect us against them. CARFA continues to monitor current research on vaccines, variants, and the modifications being made to current vaccines and their effectiveness as a consequence of the variants. We are also diligently working with the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus on whole genome sequencing, and we are monitoring the variants in the region. This is in effect a race against time, with the enemy known for its ability to change its characteristics, making the battle to contain it even more difficult. Medical experts believe that only with the inoculation of a significant percentage of the population will the COVID-19 pandemic be brought under control. Stanley Lucien for the HTS News Force. Former Bermuda Premier Ewart Brown, who is facing a string of corruption charges, has recruited a Barbadian ex-Attorney General to his legal team. Brown 75 said Sir Elliot Motley, who was Bermuda's Attorney General between 1995 and 1998, would help represent him following his January appearance by video link from Florida in the Magistrates Court. Sir Elliot, the father of Barbadian Prime Minister Mia Motley, was appointed in 1999 to the Belize Court of Appeal and was president of the court from 2004 to 2010. Sir Elliot, who retired from the bench last year, sat on the Court of Appeal of the Cayman Islands from 2005 to 2015. He also spent 17 years on the Court of Appeal of the Turks and Caicos Islands and became its president. Brown, who was Premier from 2006 to 2010, was charged with 13 counts of corruption. It was alleged he unjustly received a payment between 2001 and 2010 from the Leahy Clinic in Massachusetts in connection with Brown's clinics in Bermuda. Brown also faced allegations of corruptly obtaining US $350,500 in donations to benefit the Progressive Labour Party and the Bermuda Health Foundation between 2007 and 2010. He was not required to enter a plea at the January appearance as the case must be heard in Supreme Court. Senior Magistrate Juan Wolf released Brown on $250,000 bail. Brown said Sir Elliot would join the New York law firm De Beauvoir and Plimpton and Jerome Lynch QC on his legal team. Calling all vehicle owners, inspection and licensing continues. And at Hubbard's, we want you to be ready. From February 16th to March 31st, registration numbers 2,501 to 5,000 with single registration letter. Or registration numbers 251 to 500 with plural registration letters will receive 11% off new torque tires and power bags batteries. Don't get caught unprepared. Visit us today at the Motor Department in Mongay or the Tire Bay in Grand Nance near to the building supplies. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.